We want to talk about the proper uses of the box squat in our system of training, remembering that we are not competitive power lifters, and when you should not use the box squat. First off, a little history. The box squat was uh, probably invented uh, in Culver City, California back in the 60s. Uh, a group of guys, uh, the original West Side Barbell, and they came up with an exercise they referred to as the rocking box squat. And what they would do is they would take the weight out of the rack, sit down on the box, rock back off of their toes, come back into balance, and then come back up off of the, uh, off of the box with their hips, uh, with the rock essentially creating the pause at the bottom of the box squat. Anytime you use a box squat, the purpose of using the squat in this way is to remove the stretch reflex from the lift. When used below parallel, this obviously results in a hard squat that is quite a bit lighter than the standard stretch reflex employing squat uh, that we normally use for training. Its purpose is to make a hard squat a lighter weight so that you can get a lot of work for that same movement and same range of motion without as much weight on your back. This makes it suitable for an assistance exercise for more advanced trainees or for older trainees that wish to get a bunch of work done without as much weight on their back. The removal of the stretch reflex adds quite a bit of difficulty to this exercise. And what this also implies is that this particular exercise is not suitable for a new trainee who is just learning how to correctly perform the stretch reflex at the bottom of the squat. This is not something that we would ever use for a novice trainee. A novice trainee needs to learn how to squat. And learning how to squat means learning how to correctly time the rebound out of the bottom, correctly find the depth, and correctly perform the squat as a complete movement with a stretch reflex from top to bottom. If you insert a box into teaching a novice where the depth is on the squat, then you're gonna make him dependent on the tactile touch of the hips at the bottom of the squat and remove the ability to actually learn correct depth as a part of the normal motor pathway of the squat. So when we, when we box squat, we are <coughs> uh, assuming that the lifter already knows how to perform a correct squat. In my opinion, I don't see a purpose for a box squat for a novice trainee. I think everybody needs to learn how to squat. That being said, that later on in a person's training, there very well may be a reason to use a box squat. I do them, for instance. Uh, my knees have bothered me from years of squatting incorrectly before we figured out how to do this. As a result, uh, I have some embedded tendonitis in my knees. This is why when you guys are squatting, you ought to pay attention to the way we teach you how to squat so that you stay out of your knees and you don't create the problems that I have had for many, many years. Squat the way we teach you to squat, you won't have knee problems. If you have knee problems, the box squat is an excellent way to get out of the knees, get into the hips, and get the same amount of work out of a lighter weight that doesn't utilize a stretch reflex. When we advocate box squats, we're gonna, we're gonna use them as uh, intermediate, advanced exercises for, for lifters in that demographic. Or we're gonna use them for older people who don't need that much weight on their back, or we're gonna use them to work around knee injuries. We are not going to do the old West Side rocking box squat technique. We're going to maintain back angle. We're just going to use the squat with the box at the bottom of it as a place to pause without relaxing to remove the stretch reflex from the exercise. 
doing it this way allows us to retain the same mechanics through the whole lift that the normal squat employs with the exception of the removal of the stretch reflex. We're going to use a, a plyo box. This is a 12 inch plyo box. And what I will do is I'll set the plyo box up in as close to the center of the rack as I can get. I want the thing, the square point pointed forward because we're gonna put the heels on either side of this to make sure that uh, we actually land on the box. One of the ways we're gonna control the spacing here is to place the heels behind the front point of the box. Carmen's gonna help us today and what we're gonna do is practice this movement pattern without the bar first, okay? So take your stance. It's going to be a little bit wider than you normally squat because we are trying for vertical shins. We're trying to stay out of the knees in a box squat. We're trying to emphasize the use of the hips while at the same time pausing at the bottom of the movement. So squat down, eyeballs on the floor, real critical, critical aspect of this to anchor the back angle more horizontal. Squat down. Barely touch the box and come back up. Again. Notice that her back angle does not get more vertical at the bottom. I want you to do one wrong now. I want you to do what would be called a rocking box squat. Okay. Come down to the bottom. Get more vertical and then come back forward and come up. This is specifically what we're trying to avoid here. Do one correctly now. All right, end over, knees out, shins back, just like this. This is the way we're going to do this. Okay, that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, box squat without a bar. The addition of the bar always changes the mechanics of any squat a little bit. So let's go ahead and take the bar out of the rack. Same stance, just a little bit wider, toes out a little bit more. Your picture in your mind is a vertical shin and a more horizontal back angle. Reach back, touch the box, let the box tell you when to stop. Don't allow the box to stop you. In other words, you're gonna reach down, the box is a signal to stop, not the reason you quit going back down. That's how much control you need to have on the way down, okay? Reach down, feel the box, and then drive up. A little bit longer pause this time. Good, good, a couple more. Good, one more. Reach back, knees out. Good, rack it. Excellent. The box squat done this way is going to be using about 65, 60, 65, maybe 70% of the weight that you can do with an unpaused squat. The idea here is that the removal of the stretch reflex decreases the efficiency to the point where the upward stroke of the squat, the ascent of the squat is harder because it does not benefit from the stretch reflex and the neurological benefits that the stretch reflex always adds to any kind of a contraction. Box squats are harder as a result of this, that they will be lighter. And the amount of work that you get allows you to spare the knees and spare spinal loading. Now, once again, remember, we are not loading the spine between the barbell and the box. Feel the box, don't rest on the box. We don't want spinal compression between box and bar. This is one of the biggest problems with using a box squat with novice lifters, is they don't know how to keep tight enough to keep from compressing the spine. It's the last thing we want to do for the demographic that we use the squat for.